Hi YouTube. Today we're going to be looking at scheduling in P6 web version. We're going to be doing all these good things and finishing off with the scheduling. We'll be using the standard methodology that we've seen before uh, that involves the scope, the budget, the time. Um, more detail can be seen in this slide. And the work breakdown structure that we will use will be the create a new car WBS involving design, build, test and sell. Right here we are in P6 web. Um, you can see the main navigation tabs along the top left hand side here. We're in the projects tab at the moment. Uh, in the sub tabs we're on the EPS sub tab and we're about to start creating our new project. To do that we go to the actions drop down and say add, add a project. That will bring up this dialog box where we can put in the necessary information. So our project is going to be car and the project name is new car. Could give it a description if you wanted. Uh, which node do we want it to go in? Uh, we do want it to go in the very topmost node which is P6 training so we'll leave it there. Who's the responsible manager? Uh, we'll leave that at the default signature. Uh, plan start date, we need to worry about that. So we'll make it the 21st of July 2014 with a must finish by date uh, six months hence. So July 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and that will be the 23rd of January 2015. Uh, we're not going to be copying from uh, an existing project or template so we'll ignore that one. And now we come to the create button, hit that. The new project is created. You can see in the um, enterprise project structure uh, it's sitting where we wanted it under P6 training. There is the new folder. Um, we could add some detail to it at this moment. We could give it the um, budget. So we said our budget was going to be 50 million. And that's all we need to worry about at the moment. You can see um, against the uh, project folder that there's um, a little sunshine symbol. That means um, we haven't yet saved the data. In the web you have to save the data. And you do that by means of the, um, the floppy disk icon in the icon bar there. So we come up there, we save it, and that information is now saved. So unlike uh, the client or P6 Professional, which uh, saves automatically here, you do need to come in and do a positive save. So we have an empty folder. We now need to um, work on the detail. So we'll come to the activities window, which is one of the submenus here. Click on that. Do you want to say view or changes? We'll say yes to that one. That was a, a view saving uh, issue because we'd already saved the data. It is possible to use this little wizard to start with the activities, but we'll say don't show this again and close it. And we need to uh, build the WBS. So to do that, we need the correct screen. And these are controlled through the, the view uh, selector, top right. So we go there, we get the drop down, look at the available views. One of them is called adding work breakdown structure. So that's the one we want. Go for that one, view changes, and we're now ready to add in our WBS. That means we go to the project folder and uh, right click on it. You get a small submenu and you're given the option uh, to add activities. We're not ready for that yet, but um, or adding child WBSs. So that's what we want a child to the project folder means it will come in one level below the project folder as a child to the parent project. So we hit that 
my WBS goes in. And in there we can type the name of the WBS. Save that. Now we um, right click on the WBS, the existing WBS. Um, now you've got the option of uh, either adding children, which would be a level down, or siblings, which would be at the same level. So we want all of ours to be at the same level. So add a sibling, goes in at the same level. Give it its name. And same again, sibling. And the same again sibling. So there's our four WBS all at the same level, which is one level down from the project. So everything's at level two. Um, see the sunshine icons there, so we need to click the save floppy disk to save all that information. And we're now ready to go on to the next stage, which is building the activities for our project. So we'll go to the project itself, we'll change the view because um, the columns that are currently in place are appropriate for adding WBS but not for adding activities. So we'll change the view. We do have a, a view for adding activities. If you didn't have that you'd have to build your own through the um, columns icon here. You can see now that um, the WBS is in place. Um, we now have a column for activity name, activity type, the duration of each activity. When we schedule, we'll be able to see the float. Uh, then we'll be able to get round to putting in resources. And as soon as we put in resources, we'll be getting a cost uh, for the project. So highlighting the, the project level, and then right-clicking, adding an activity. The activity as a green bar goes in. We give it a name, uh, Project Admin. This is going to be a level of effort activity. So we go to the activity type, click in there in the right of the cell, find the appropriate activity type, level of effort. And uh, that's in now. So now we can go to the design the WBS and add in activities there. So we'll add the first one, which will be the start milestone. Change the activity type to start milestone. Notice the, uh, the black diamond goes in the Gantt chart there. And we'll add Two more. First one's going to be organize. At uh, 25 days. And the second is going to be finalize. Also 25 days. And both are the default task dependent. Activities just adjust the column widths. Space is always a consideration, so we try and get our column widths as narrow as we can possibly get away with. Um, you can see the sunshine icon on them, so I need to save. When I save, the um, automatic uh, ID numbers go in. You can see they're ascending with a uh, a gap of 10 in between each that will allow us to insert things if we forget things uh, later on. I'm going to use these two generic um, activities, organize and finalize, on each of the WBS. So I'm going to copy them from there and paste them into these others. Save those. Numbering's good. Then add our 
final activity for this example, which will be the finished milestone. Change the activity type. to finish milestone. Save that. So there we have all our activities in place. Numbered, identified, they all have durations. So the final thing we need before we can schedule is to have relationships between them all. We could do that um, through the tabs at the bottom. Um, where we can see uh, predecessors and successors. So if I wanted a successor, I could come down here and add it in there. Um, I won't do that just now. I want to do this quickly. So what I'm going to do is um, highlight all the activities. Then right click in the dark blue area. And in the drop down menu, I'll go for the link selected activities option. So I click on that. And you can see in the Gantt chart that all of them have now been um, linked. Um, in the default finish to start relationship type. So that's all of them in, in one quick uh, movement. I just need to sort out the, um, the level of effort that has to be linked to the start milestone and the finish milestone. So I highlight the activity, I make its predecessor, assign, drop down there, I make it the start milestone, so assign that, close the box, and that's a start to start uh, relationship type. It's gone in automatically, so I don't need to change that. And I make it successor. The finish milestone. And I finish to finish relationship. I save that. Notice the sunshine icons. Those you can see all the relationships are in place now. So that means we've got the bare minimum necessary in order to schedule. So now we'll go ahead and schedule. Come up to the icon bar, find the scheduling icon, or we could press F9. Press that. Scheduling dialog box pops up. Gives us the, the data date. Uh, data date of 21 July, which is the start date of the project, so that's fine. We hit the schedule button. And the computer does the forward pass to establish the early start and finish dates and a backward pass to establish the latest start and finish date. So now we've got our classic um, staircase from top left to bottom right, showing us when the project starts and when it's uh, anticipated to finish. You might remember from um, our initial um, creation of the project where we said we wanted it to be a six month project which put us into um, January 2015 clearly we've gone beyond that so the project isn't quite right at the moment and we've got um, negative 70 on float meaning we're 70 days beyond our project must finish by date so one of our first jobs when we come to optimize the project is to get rid of 70 days shorten the project by 70 days so that we're meeting our must finish by date and um, the project will then be viable so we'll be doing that in a, a later uh, video so that's a brief introduction to p6 web we will be doing more training videos on this and customized training can be provided if required. There's the contact details.